Today we're going to compare the Sony a6700 up against the Sony a7 IV, which is very similar to the new a7C Mark II. Bit of a battle between full frame and APS-C, so let's just jump right into it. music in today's video is from our sponsor audio get 70% off their pro plan link below so I really want to know what the differences are and the similarities these two cameras have and how well the Sony a6700 being an APS-C size sensor competes against the a7 IV being full frame but I also want to help you guys out if you're just not sure whether you should be buying the a6700 the a7 IV or maybe the a7C mark II is a better option you might be struggling to decide whether to get a a full frame or a APS-C body so hopefully this video will shed a little bit of light for which option is best for you. I shot these two cameras side by side on a recent shoot so I'll be rolling some photo and video examples as we talk about these two cameras. Yeah, I love that. Yeah, it's So I haven't had a lot of time with the a6700. It literally just got released and I've only owned it for about one month now. As with the a7 IV, I actually own three of these cameras and they have been my main bodies for the last 18 months now. I shot both these cameras with Sigma lenses with the full frame equivalent of a 24 millimeter and an 85 mil. So on the a6700, I used the 16 and the 56 millimeter, while on the a7 IV, I used the 24 and the 85 millimeter. All these lenses have the ability to go as low as f1.4, so it's gonna be interesting to seeing how the crop factor of 1.5 on APS-C affects depth of field and also resolution. And then just looking straight at me, yeah, that's beautiful. In terms of usability, these cameras are very similar. The autofocus is basically the same. I haven't noticed any major improvement with the new AI chip in the a6700 for portraits. The menu is basically the same. It's easy to switch between photo and video mode. The a7 IV does have a better grip, but that does make sense as the a6700 is a more compact build. You can customize the buttons the same, while the Sony a7 IV does have a few more custom button options. I will say that not having a joystick on the a6700 is a slight pain. I'm not a fan of touch to focus. And I haven't found a way to customize a recenter of my focal point on the a6700 with a custom button. But the a6700 has the ability to import LUTs while the a7 IV cannot. This feature is great as I have made my own S-Log free LUTs and it gives me a more accurate exposure compared to the a7 IV which uses Gamma Assist. And the Gamma Assist just doesn't work that well. The a6700 only has that one card slot while on the a7 IV you do have dual cards so you can dual record and have an instant backup. That's the main reason why I'm not using the a6700 for client jobs. And lastly, the max shutter of the a6700 is half that of the a7 IV for the mechanical shutter. One over 4000 is just too slow for my line of work. And the new a7C Mark II is basically the Sony a7 IV in the a6700 body. Before we get into the differences of image quality between the Sony a6700's 24 megapixel APS-C sensor versus the a7IV's 33 megapixel full frame sensor, a quick word from today's sponsor, which is Audio. Audio is my new go-to platform for music and sound effects, not only for this YouTube channel, but also for my client work. I'm doing a lot of social media campaigns for Instagram and TikTok. However, these clients don't want their music or their audio to become suddenly unavailable. So by using Audio, I can actually give them the peace of mind with an actual music license and that content will not get blocked. And because of their minimalistic layout, I can find a music track that will fit 
fit the theme of my video because they have the best filtration system in the game. The Audio Pro plan is the best value for money. It's a yearly subscription that gives you access to the entire catalog of music and sound effects audio has to offer. And the best part is guys, they're giving you guys 70% off their pro plan. That's only $59 a year or less than $5 a month. It's definitely the most affordable and best value for money deal in the music licensing market today. So for real music and not stock music, click the link in the description down below and use the promo code GERARD70 for that 70% off their pro plan. Thank you audio for sponsoring this video and also supporting the channel. The A6700 has been improved a lot in terms of image quality from the previous A6600. And now side by side the A74, the RAW files look identical and they edit really well with my presets giving me accurate and consistent results. But an APS-C size sensor is one and a half times smaller than a full frame sensor. So there's something called a crop factor of 1.5 times. This affects the out of focus depth of field. It also affects the field of view and also affects your effective resolution. So to convert everything into a full frame field of view, you either need to multiply or divide the crop factor. That's why the 16 millimeter has a full frame field of 24 millimeter and the f1.4 of the 16 millimeter actually has the same depth of field as a 24 millimeter shot at f2.1. So you do lose a little bit of depth when you're using an APS-C sensor. That's the main reason I like to use prime lenses on APS-C cameras and I don't like using zooms, but I'm really happy to use both primes and zooms on my full frame. And for resolution, this 24 megapixel APS-C sensor is the same resolution as a 16 megapixel full frame. So the A74 is more than twice the resolution of the A6700. This isn't a problem for social media or online use, and you guys here on YouTube probably can't even tell the difference. But it's definitely something to consider if you're looking to print your work or you're looking to do really heavy cropping. In terms of dynamic range, I shot these two cameras side by side with the, exactly the same settings being under and overexposed for photo. And I did the same for video, but I used S-Log3. And you can see that the A7 IV does a lot better. It has way less noise and more dynamic range at recovering highlights and shadows. That's a pretty extreme test. And I really do think that if you expose your image properly, you're not gonna tell the difference between the two. The A6700 has the exact same internals as my FX30 over here, but I do definitely prefer my A7IVs for lower light situations compared to my FX30. But I did recently make a A6700 low light test. I'll link that down in the description down below. And I'm really surprised how well that A6700 did in low light. These two cameras have very similar video capabilities. They can both shoot in S-Log3, 10-bit 422. They have the exact same stabilization. The A6700 can record at 4K 120 with a crop, while the A74 can only record at 4K 60, again with a crop. The A74 is definitely better in lower light situations, being a full frame sensor. You're just not gonna notice the noise as much as an APS-C size sensor. So in terms of video, there's not really a massive difference. The A6700 is a much smaller camera than the A74 and APS-C lenses are tiny compared to full frame lenses. Here is the Sony A74 with the Sigma 85mm compared to the A6700 with the 56mm from Sigma. That's a huge weight and size difference between these two cameras and the equivalent of 85mm. So in conclusion on what I like and dislike about these two cameras, the A6700 is small and compact, more affordable for the body and also APS-C lenses, and it just has really good image quality. What I don't like about the A6700 is there is no dual card slot. The APS-C 1.5 times crop factor is pretty annoying. There's no joystick, so no way to center your focal point. The one over 4,000 shutter is a little bit annoying, but I can deal with that. And I just think it's pretty overpriced. Now what I like about my Sony a7 IV is the 33 megapixel full frame sensor. I love the ergonomics of the a7 IV and all the custom buttons and 
just how well it just feels in my hand. And I just think it's well priced. It came out at $2,500 USD, which is for a full pro camera. And you can probably pick these up for a lot cheaper on the secondhand market today. I've only got one dislike with the Sony a7 IV, and that is the 4K 60 crop. I find that super annoying, and I just wish it was 4K 60 frames per second full frame. And finally, one thing I don't like about all of my Sony cameras, and that is the menu system. It's taken me a few years to figure out and perfect the menu on these Sony cameras. So I actually wrote down all of this knowledge on Sony cameras and their menu system for Sony camera guides. They are linked down in the description down below. So what is the best camera for you and your needs? The A6700 is a perfect travel camera for capturing special moments with family and friends, or for people like me who make content here on YouTube, I think this is a perfect camera. The A7 IV is an absolute beast of a camera. It's a real professional camera with professional features. It's great for both photo and for video, and that's why I own three of these cameras for my professional work. Now the A7C Mark II just came out, so it's the newer camera out of all three of these cameras and it's basically a mix of these two cameras. So if you want a full frame camera with all the new features like the new AI autofocus and being able to import LUTs for S-Log3 and you want it to be a small and compact camera, maybe this is the camera for you. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, like the video if you like the video. Remember if you like the way that I edit my photos, I do sell presets. If you wanna see the difference between the Sony a7 IV and the original a6700, watch that video right here. And if you want to see a video between the A7 IV and the FX30, check out that video right here. Otherwise, we'll see you next time.